بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه Flash of white light Lit up the sky over Gaza tonight People running for cover Not knowing whether they're dead or alive They came with their tanks and their planes With ravaging fiery flames And nothing remains Just a voice rising up in the smoky haze We will not go down in the night without a fight You can burn up our mosques and our homes and our schools But our spirit will never die We will not go down in Gaza tonight Women and children alike Murdered and massacred night after night While the so-called leaders of countries afar Debated on who's wrong or right But their powerless words were in vain And the bombs fell down like acid rain But through the tears and the blood and the pain You can still hear that voice through the smoky haze We will not go down I'm Zafar Bangash. Welcome to another segment of the Muslim Perspectives. We are here at the rally outside the Israeli consulate on Bloor Street. This is the third rally in two weeks and thousands of people, as you can see, are gathered over here. And I've got uh, Sid Ryan, President of the Canadian Union of Public Employees of Ontario Division. He has spoken at the rally several times. I'm going to ask Mr. Ryan to explain what this rally is about. Sid, could you please explain to our viewers why you are here and also explain you have called for a boycott of those Israeli academics that have not condemned the attack on Gaza University. Could you please elaborate further? Well, um, first off, we uh, represent uh, the largest uh, trade union here in Ontario, almost a quarter of a million workers, and uh, our union is very strong on the question of human rights. So whenever we see human rights violations taking place anywhere in the world, we always like to speak out. Uh, in this country, our government is not speaking out against these atrocities. Um, so I believe it falls to civil society to um, use the platforms that we've got to be able to bring some balance to the equation and say um, anywhere we see these human rights, we must roundly speak out against them. In terms of Israel, my, uh, my union has already uh, passed a motion a couple of years ago dealing with an economic boycott of, uh, of Israel uh, to be able to try to force them back to a bargaining table to sit down such that we can have um, a viable Palestinian state. Um, in terms of the, the newest uh, violation, um, we're actually taking a look at, um, at originally we were talking about doing a, a, viol uh, sorry, a, a boycott of academics, but we've since looked at this question and said that what we ought to be doing really is looking at what they did in South Africa is to do um, a, a boycott of institutions. So the academic institutions rather than the individuals, um, because the individuals become somewhat problematic. Um, we're still looking at that, we've got to bring that to our union convention, a conference, since we have this debate in a couple of weeks' time. Um, but at this moment, uh, you know, clearly uh, we're, we're very, very concerned uh, about the, the lack of a, of a true um, balanced opinion or a voice coming out of our Canadian parliamentarians. Um, so I think it's... 
case that uh, this is a this is a crime uh, against the people in Gaza and it has to stop and we need to find uh, a peace that will be a lasting peace um, for both the Palestinians of course who have to have a, a viable state where they have a thriving economy where their children can grow up and be educated just like they have they, have, they can be in the state of Israel now they tell me why is the Canadian government uh, Stephen Harper is silent and some of his ministers are still making statements in support of Israel's assault on Gaza. Well, I think that has a lot to do with, with Canadian politics. Um, there are a couple of seats in this uh, in this country where um, they, you know there's a large Jewish vote, and given we're in a minority parliament, those votes in those seats are very, very crucial. It could be the difference between winning a minority government or a majority government. So clearly, what they're trying to do is to pander up to one side in this debate. They don't see the Palestinian vote or, or even the Muslim vote in this country has been very significant as of yet. That's why I said earlier today in my speech that the Muslim community, the Palestinian community, have got to organize themselves into a very strong voting uh, block, power block in this country. You really have to start getting political and get people elected because it's the only way those voices are going to be heard. You can see right now in this great crisis that we have that your side and your community's interests are not being represented. Uh, the Palestinian voice, the Muslim voice has not been heard in this country because we don't have people in Parliament capable of speaking out. We need to be able to elect more parliamentarians um, from your community. Um, we have with us Jenny Peter, who is a student. She was one of the uh, women who occupied the Israeli consulate on Wednesday, January the 7th. We're going to ask her why she did that. Uh, Jenny, please explain to us why did you occupy the Israeli consulate? Well, we were you know, outraged and disgusted by this latest escalation of Israeli violence and the media kept covering you know, the Jewish Defense League as representing Jewish people and we wanted to make it very clear that Israel does not represent Jewish people, they don't speak for us. There are many, many, many of us who are against Israeli apartheid and do not support the massacres in Gaza. So we wanted to deliver a message to Israel and to Canada that you know, these are war crimes and we do not support them being done in our name. Upstairs, a group of about 10 Jewish, Canadian and Israeli women are uh, sitting in at the consulate, occupying the Israeli consulate until it stops these acts. At one point, one of you know, Israel controls all the borders, sea, land, and air, and there's no electricity there, there's no way of um, you know, securing fuel and heat and um, potable water. Um, we know from UN documentation and Amnesty International that you know, people haven't been let out for medical care. They're now waiting to be arrested. It's 11.08. Uh, they went in uh, almost an hour ago and we contacted the media about 55 minutes ago. Jewish women, not in our name! There are many Jews here in Canada, in the United States, in Europe, in Israel, who are ashamed, who do not want pa Palestine, to, this massacre, to take place in our name. And we call on all Jews to speak out against this massacre and demand that Israel stop the bombing, pull out of Gaza, and make a just peace with the Palestinians. We were here because we are opposed to what Israel is doing in Gaza. Israel is bombing children and civilians, and people are being put in harm's way and Israel knows that. So my name is Jenny Pito. I'm actually here representing Jewish youth because there's actually a huge growing number of Jewish youth who are sickened Woo! by what's happening, what the state of Israel is doing in our name. What's going on in Gaza right now is a war crime. It's collective punishment. They are deliberately targeting civilians and using an absolutely disproportionate use of force in these massacres. The UN is condemning it. Everyone except the Canadian government and the American government are coming out and condemning it. We want the government of Canada to call for sanctions against Israel, to cut all military and political ties with this apartheid regime. I'm here to protest the targeting of civilians in Palestine, especially now in Gaza. I'm here to protest that there's been an 18-month siege with people starving, without medical supplies. I'll, talk, I'll call you back. That they have just killed 650 people, women and children and men. 
People are dying for no reason. And we do not support it. We're Jewish women, not in my name. It has to stop. Like, it's not another issue. There's not two sides to this. There is a humanitarian catastrophe, and we have to put ourselves on the line to stop it. And that's what we did. Now, I know that some people in the Jewish community, particularly those who are supporters of Israel, they would call you self-hating Jew. What would you, how would you respond to that? I think that's just ridiculous. I think that I do this in part because my grandparents are Holocaust survivors. Jewish people know injustice. We know massacre. We know slaughter. So it is, it is in part because of my Jewish identity that I do this work. And I think that, you know, it's just ridiculous when they say we're self-hating Jews. Israel is not the Jewish people. It's not the same thing. It's an apartheid state that does not represent represent all Jews. Make with me, please. Thank you. Victory to Gaza children. Down with Israel. Down with Israel. We've got Andy Lair, who is with the Independent Jewish Voices, and he's been an outspoken critic of Israeli policies, uh, particularly the Israeli attack on Gaza. Uh, welcome to the Muslim Perspective Program, Andy. Uh, please tell us why you are here. Well, I w I'm here because as a Jewish person, I'm uh, appalled by what's happening in, 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 uh, in Gaza and what's been happening to the Palestinians for the, uh, since 1948. Um, it's, a, it's a fundamental Jewish value, uh, belief in human rights and, uh, and equality, and that's been violated uh, for year after year after year uh, against the Palestinian people. Now tell me, how long have you been involved in uh, uh, these called uh, human rights activities? Well, actually, you know, I started out as an anti-apartheid activist uh, in the 80s against South African apartheid. Uh, so, you know, for about 20 years on this specific issue for probably about two or three years, although I've always, I've always been uh, sympathetic to Palestinian rights. Now, when you say you are with the independent Jewish voices, how would you categorize that? It's an... It's a network, it's an anti, a network of anti-occupation uh, Jews, around 18 organizations around, uh, around the country, uh, ever from Halifax to uh, Victoria. Now, th there are some um, Israeli supporters who say that those Jewish people that can criticize Israel, that they are, they are being self-hating Jews. How would you respond to that? Well, you know, there are, there are 100,000 uh, Israelis marching in Tel Aviv last weekend against the war. Uh, you know, if they're self-hating Jews, there's a serious problem in Israel. We've got Dr. Farid Ayad with us, who's one of the organizers, president of the uh, Palestine House, and we're going to ask him exactly what the purpose of this rally is. Uh, Dr. Farid, welcome to, the, to our program, Muslim Perspectives. Could you please explain what is the purpose of this rally today? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, the, the, the main purpose of this rally is to send a message of peace to the people of Gaza. We, the, 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 this message uh, where we condemn the Israeli massacres on the people of Gaza. We condemn our government, the Canadian government that until now has been silent, doing, saying nothing except we saw that the uh, junior foreign minister uh, of foreign affairs came out to, to support the Israeli aggression on the people of Gaza. We are here to protest that the Israeli attack on civilians, demolishing their houses, demolishing their hospitals, demolishing their, their universities. Even until now, they demolished over nine, than nine mosques, nine mosques. But, alhamdulillah, yesterday, the people of Gaza went out and prayed Friday on the rebels of the mosques. So, uh, so today, we are here to, to send a message to the people of Gaza, to salute the, to, 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 to salute the, the, the people of Gaza and the children of Gaza for their resistant occupation, the Israeli occupation of Palestine, all Palestine. 
Now, why is the Canadian government and the opposition parties not standing up for truth and justice in Gaza and Palestine? Well, the Canadian government or the Conservative Party, like on the attack on Lebanon in 2006, they thought they thought that they will, in, in doing this, the Zionist lobby in Canada will, will help them to get a majority, a majority government. What did we see? We see in the last election that they didn't get the majority government. As we speak, the Conservative Party is not governing. The, the parliament is prorogued. And, and why? Because the people didn't give the, the majority government. They don't represent the values of the Canadian government, or the Canadian people at large. Our values here as Canadians is for to support justice and, and to support peace and war in the world, not only in Gaza and in Palestine and in Afghanistan and in Iraq, all over the world. Now, you know, there are thousands and thousands of people over here, and even last week, I mean, there were at least 10,000 people, but the media said there were probably a few hundred people. Why do you think the media is underplaying these uh, uh, tendencies? Again, the media is it's, it's like uh, when you go and you make up, they, they, they're closing their eyes, uh, they're not telling the truth. Like CBC yesterday reported that the last week, uh, last week demonstration, there were only, there were only, there were only hundreds, there were only hundreds, but there were, well, there was, there were over than 12,000 demonstrators here. Today, over than 15,000. Whatever they do, we we are Canadians. We represent we represent a majority here in Canada. We are the consensus of Canada, and we are the conscious of Canada. These people out there represent the true conscious of Canada. Here to support they, 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 to support justice only. They are coming here to ask to stop this man. The, the, the bodies of their moms and their dad just looking at them. No, that's good, mashallah. This is fantastic. You correct? The Islamic Society of York Region will present a special program on Gaza on Saturday, February the 7th, 2009. The program will start at 5.30 p.m. Among the guest speakers are Imam Muhammad Al-Asi, fellow at the Institute of Contemporary Islamic Thought, and Afif Khan, editor of the Tafsir, The Ascendant Quran. The Islamic Society of York Region is located at 1380 Stoveville Road in Richmond Hill. For further information, please contact us at 905-887-8913 or you can email us at crescent at ca.inter.net. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday, February the 7th. We've got James Clark with us, who is with the Toronto Coalition to Stop the War. He has been an organizer of rallies like these for a long time, first against the war in Iraq, then in Afghanistan, and now we've got this tragedy going on in Palestine. And we're going to talk to him. James has been one of the major organizers of these rallies. James, welcome to this. Uh, Thank you, Zafar. Thank you. Now, tell me, what is the purpose of this particular rally today? Today, there are demonstrations happening all over Canada and indeed around the world. We're a part of the Canadian Peace Alliance. There are 17 towns and cities across Canada that are here to protest Israel's murderous, barbaric war against the people of Palestine and Gaza, but also as Canadians, as people living in Canada, to condemn our own government's complicity in these war crimes. Why do you think the Canadian government and the opposition party, particularly the Liberals, have not uh, come out openly in condemning Israeli crimes? Instead, they are supporting Israeli crimes. Why do you think that is the... Well, the government has a long history of being part of the so-called war on terror. As you mentioned, the Canadian government has troops in Afghanistan, 2,600 troops there. This current government, when it was in opposition, tried to send troops to Iraq. And now they're completely in line with uh, the Israelis supporting this, these massacres that are happening. And we think that there's a broader agenda at work here. The government is supporting uh, George Bush's war on terror. Right now, Gaza is on the front lines of that war on terror. The people of Gaza and Palestine are the leading resistance of that war on terror, which actually affects people all over the world. And our government is part and parcel of that murderous war. And so it is completely consistent with their policies to line up with Israel, to line up with the United States, to allow this massacre to happen. Now, are you satisfied with the turnout today and the composition of the turnout? 
Yes, and it's important that we talk about this. The turnout and the demonstrations here have been in the tens of thousands. You got to think about how difficult it is to mobilize. It's in the middle of the winter. We have very few resources. We have to move very quickly. And in a matter of two weeks, there have been two demonstrations of tens of thousands of people in dozens of towns and cities all across the country. That's a tremendous achievement. It's also important to talk about the composition of these demonstrations. There is an anti-war majority in this country, a clear anti-war majority in this country. That includes people from the Muslim community, from the Jewish community, from the Christian community, people of all faith, people of all backgrounds. Looking around at this demonstration here today, you can see people from all walks of life who are moved by the tragedy of what's happening in Gaza and Palestine and want to come here and build a united movement of resistance for peace and for justice. And this is the kind of movement that was able to stop the Canadian governments from sending troops to Iraq. It's the same kind of movement that we hope will be able to stop the massacres that are underway in Israel right now. Now, what specifically do you want to achieve with respect to the situation in Gaza? What will be the steps in terms of, you know, what should happen there? Uh, that, what is the, that is the purpose of this particular rally. Well, there are a number of demands. The most immediate demand right now, the most immediate demand is that all the bombing has to stop. Israel has to stop its war against Gaza and the Palestinian people. We have to reject the equation that this is a war between two, two equal forces. Israel is the most military, uh, the most powerful military uh, state in the region. It is nuclear armed. It has a long history of uh, flouting international law. It has committed war crimes. The Palestinians are living in abject poverty. 80% of the population really, uh, relies on aid. Uh, most of the people, 40% of the population are in refugee camps. There is a difference between the victimizer and the victim, between the oppressor and the oppressed. And Israel is the victimizer and the oppressor. The Palestinians, the Gazans, are the oppressed and the victimized. We have to understand that equation. Immediately the war must stop. We also need to have a longer term solution that recognizes the right of return, uh, the dispossession of Palestinian land. There has to be a long term solution that recognizes the theft of that land, the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians that began 1947. 1948. There has to be a free uh, democratic Palestine that exists for all people uh, who live in the region. Muslim, uh, Jew, Arab, everybody can live together in one uh, democratic state where all people's rights are respected and where the Palestinian national tradition uh, is at the forefront. There have been some reports, particularly from the in, uh, representatives of the International Committee of the Red Cross and the UN, that Israel may have committed war crimes, that it is in violation of international law as well as international humanitarian law. How would you comment on that? It is obviously uh, gross violations of international law and of war crimes. There is no question that uh, there is no question that these uh, violate international law. Uh, what's coming out of the UN is probably timid and underestimates uh, what's actually happening. It's important for us to emphasize that again that Israel is flouting international law, is committing these gross atrocities, uh, human rights abuses against the Palestinians, and that has to be uh, something that we talk about uh, in the press and the media amongst the, the Canadian public, because then people will see just how lopsided this whole argument is. What is so uh, obscene and offensive about the, the public dialogue about what's happening here is that it's completely inverted. It is completely on its head. The argument that we hear from the mainstream press is that Israel is somehow the victim of this. Israel is not the victim in this. It is the Palestinians. And we need to understand that. Once we understand and accept those parameters, it will be much easier for us to develop and build long-term solutions that provide peace and justice for the Palestinians. Now, if Israel is uh, guilty of war crimes, then those governments and leaders that support Israel in this aggression against the people of uh, Gaza, aren't they complicit in war crimes? Yes, our government, I think, is complicit in the crimes that are happening in Gaza, uh, across the, the territories. We talked about what happened during the war in, in Lebanon. Our government has to be held accountable for that, and, and one of the most effective ways for us to do that is to continue building these mass movements. We need to make it a, a political crisis for this government to know that what they're doing will not be accepted by the majority of public opinion in Canada or around the world. As I said, 17 towns and cities, probably more, demonstrating today. In the United States, there are more than 100 cities and towns that are demonstrating against what's happening in Gaza. And I think more people are understanding how the United States is leading this war on terror all around the world, that is Israel acts as the warship for the United States, a permanent warship in the region that is unleashed to attack the resistance movements that are fighting for uh, their leg legitimate national rights, for peace and for justice, the attacks on, uh, on, on Hezbollah, Hamas, legitimate resistance movements that have every right uh, that have every right uh, to fight for uh, to fight for their rights. Uh, that's what uh, the war on terror is all about. And right now, the Gazans and the Palestinians are leading the resistance against that.
tell me, why are you here today? I'm here to support Palestine. They have no right to steal our country. Well, I have no families in Palestine or anything, but I'm here to support Palestine because I know that Israelis have no right to steal their country, and they're killing innocent people. Like they have no hearts to kill innocent like children, two years old, one year old, even like six months. Like this is so inappropriate. They're calling us the terrorists when they're stealing our countries. Now tell me, when you, when you, I'm sure you're a student, you go to school, what do your fellow students say about what is happening in, in Gaza and the Israeli attacks on the Palestinian people? Well, most of my friends are all with us, like on our side, but there are some that are against us, which I really don't like talking to, but uh, so far everyone supports us in our class and everything like that. Now if you were to send a message to the children in Palestine, in Gaza in particular, what would you say to them? Don't worry, Gaza, everyone will save you guys. Palestine will be free. Akbar. What's your name? Ahmed. Ahmed. And how old are you, Ahmed? Uh, ten. You, 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 are, you are here to support the children of Palestine? Yeah. And why are you here today? To let the people know that Palestine is getting here and you need a free Palestine. And, and you are upset because children are being killed in Palestine? Yes. And, and what would you like uh, to happen? You would, would like this war to stop? Yeah. And what about you? Would you like, uh, what, what kind of a message would you like to send to the children of Palestine? I would like to send, uh, give the water to them and give food to them. What about you? Do you watch TV? Yes. And when you see these children that are being killed and they are hungry, how does that make you feel? Really sad. And would you like to help them? Yes. Blinding flash of white light Lit up the sky over Gaza tonight People running for cover Not knowing whether they're dead or alive They came with their tanks and their planes With ravaging fiery flames And nothing remains just a voice rising up in the smoky haze We will not go down in the night without a fight You can burn up our mosques and our homes and our schools But our spirit will never die We will not go down in Gaza tonight Women and children alike Murdered and massacred night after night While the so-called leaders of countries afar Debated on who's wrong or right But their powerless words were in vain And the bombs fell down like acid rain through the tears and the blood and the pain You can still hear that voice through the smoky haze We will not go down in the night without a fight You can burn up our mosques and our homes and our schools But our spirit will never die We will not The Islamic Society of York Region will present a special program on Gaza on Saturday, February the 7th, 2009. The program will start at 5.30 p.m. Among the guest speakers are Imam Muhammad Al-Asi, fellow at the Institute of Contemporary Islamic Thought, and Afif Khan, editor of the Tafsir, The Ascendant Quran. The Islamic Society of York Region is located at 1380 Stoveville Road in Richmond Hill. For further information, please contact us at 905-887-8913. Or you can email us at crescent at ca.inter.net. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday, February the 7th.